How's it going, folks? How's it going? I'm Brother Matthew, and this is Christian Coffee Time. It's been a while since I've done one of these, uh, a live Instagram. And so I just thought I'd come on here and uh, talk about some stuff that we've been discussing, I've been posting, um, <clears throat> and that's in regards to the doctrine of eternal security, of salvation. There's many people who believe that you can lose your salvation, it can be taken away, or it can be recanted, or something like that. And what I want to do is, is talk about that for a bit, and, and show you what the Bible says about these kinds of things. A lot of people live in fear, uh, wor wondering, worrying, can I lose my salvation, and all that kind of thing. You know, can it be taken away, or what do I have to do, can I, can I wind up doing something or saying something where I'd lose it? No. Um, if salvation can be lost or taken away or recanted, then that denotes that it's by works to maintain to keep it, and that would contradict Scripture in a plethora of, of matters. So we see all throughout the Word of God, eternal security is based upon the grace of God. Grace is the unmerited favor. Unmerited favor of God. That I didn't merit it, I didn't earn it, it's not a reward, I don't deserve it, he gave it to me anyways, even though, he, he, well, because he so loved me, that, it, that the grace of Christ overrides me, my stupidity, my weaknesses, my inabilities, anything like that. He holds us, he, we're held in the hand of the Father, no man could pluck you out, that means you can't pluck yourself out either. <laughs> Think about that one. You can't pluck yourself out either. I will never leave you nor forsake you is a lie if he can. So, but, but what if what if I recant? What if I don't want it anymore? When did the prodigal son cease to be a son of his father? Even in the pen with the pigs? When did the prodigal son cease to be a son of his father? He didn't. But rather we see conviction came upon him and he climbed up, got out and returned and the father ran and embraced him. He never ceased to be a son of his father. So oh, does that mean I can just go and do whatever I want? No, see there's a difference. You see the works-based salvationists, those who believe you can lose your salvation, it can be taken away or whatever, they confuse oftentimes the power of enlightenment with the power of salvation. You see, this is what Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6 is talking about in Hebrews 10, 26. Hebrews 6, 4 to 6 and Hebrews 10, 26 is about the unsaved being under the state of enlightenment. It's upon their minds. Their eyes are open. They have a taste of they have a taste of the knowledge. They get it. They see it. It's all in the mind. They, they believe in it, but they haven't believed on it. See, there's a difference between believing in and believing on. You can believe in and not be saved, but you must be believe on. This is why Paul told the jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believing in is of the mind, intellectualism. Believing on is of the heart. That's Romans 10, 9 to 10. So once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're born again, saved, sealed by the Spirit of God. How would you be sealed of the Spirit if you can lose it? It's not sealed then, but we're sealed unto the day of redemption. It's the day you go to be with the Lord, whether in death or the second coming of Christ. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. So we are redeemed, bought out, saved, uh, changed, made new out of our sins. We are born again, brought to life because we're dead in our sins. So are you honestly saying then... That uh, that I that Jesus can wring his blood off of me, rip his spirit out of me, put me back to death again, and throw me into the fires of hell because of something I did. No, that that that's not a thing. That doesn't happen. That's what every other false religion says, because every single other belief system in the entire world is a works-based system of self-salvation and self-atonement. Born-again Christianity is the only one where it's salvation by grace alone. But if that, but if there was one micron of my ability that was that was needed for salvation, then grace is a lie then grace is earned. And it's not grace then by what the Bible says. Grace doesn't exist then. But grace is the unmerited favor. That means it's nothing of me, all of him. It's nothing of me, it's all of him. He did it all. He did all the work, all the atonement, everything. What's left for me is believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. First John five thirteen. that ye may know that ye have eternal life. How? Why? Because you believed. 
Because you believed. How many passages do we see all throughout the word of God? It's belief, 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 belief alone. Belief alone. For by grace, unmerited favor of God, that I didn't merit it, I didn't earn it, it's not a reward, I don't deserve it. For by grace are ye saved through faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's not of works. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. How many, how many times does he need to say that? Not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3, 5, it, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, not by religiosity, anything you could possibly see, do, feel, of senses, works, whatever. It's not of you, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but, but is of the Spirit of God. He washes us and changes us by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God does all the work. Nothing of me. Some people think, well, Titus 3, 5 is about baptism by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God washes your, you clean. Though your sins be as scarlet, you should be washed whiter than snow. Though they be red like crimson, they should be washed white like wool. That's the Spirit of God. It's a spiritual thing. It's not water baptism. That would be a righteous work to earn to gain anyways. Which is not. Galatians 2.16, not by work, works of the law. So it's not by works, not by righteous works, not by works of the law. It's not by you in any way, shape, or form. It's by grace through faith are you saved by belief alone. That's what scripture says. And I, I can't lose it. It can't be taken away. I can't recant it because it's not in my hands, my works, my power, my anything. I bring nothing to the table of my salvation other than the sin that made it necessary, as Jonathan Edwards says. So salvation is by grace, by the Spirit of Christ. It's a work of God, not my works. If I could lose it, if it could be taken away, if I could recant it, then that denotes it's by works to keep it. Then this is a lie. Throw it in the garbage then. We're no different than the Catholics and the Mormons and the Hindus and the Buddhists and all the rest of them. We're no different than any other world religion. Go eat, drink, be merry, for tomorrow we die because you can never have peace. You can never have peace. You can never have peace about your salvation. You can never know if you're going to heaven because, well, one little thing could, I could lose it. If I get in a bad attitude, I could lose it. If I don't do enough things, I could lose it. It could be taken away or whatever. I can never have peace. I can never actually know. Then 1 John 5.13 is a lie that ye may know. But how can I know if I could be lost? You see the issue, the conundrum? Salvation cannot be lost. It cannot be taken away. It cannot be recanted because it's by grace. Because it's by grace. Because it's by faith. And faith means Nothing of your senses and physicality. And grace is all of God and none of me. Because it's not of works, as any man should boast. It's, it's not of ourselves. Then that means you cannot lose your salvation. It, you cannot lose it. It cannot be taken away. It cannot be recanted. Because it's not in our power to earn, to gain, or maintain, to keep, or self-atone. He did everything. So does that mean I could just go do whatever I want? No. Here's the thing. Why would you want to? Someone who wants to go and stay in sin and has no conviction of sin. But they say they believe in Jesus. Did they lose their salvation? Is it being lost? Did they recant it? Or maybe did they not get saved in the first place? That's the, that's the false converts. They are under the enlightenment. That's what Hebrews 6, 4 to 6 is talking about. How hard it will be to renew them again. But James chapter 2, faith that works is dead, was written to Christians who are already saved. And it's talking about charity and Christian behavior for the purpose of promotion of the faith, not maintenance of salvation. It, it's not in our hands to maintain, to keep our salvation. And yet you will be saved. Uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be, which is a present tense. It's not be, you shall be eventually, you know, upon death. No, no. The moment, it's present tense. Believe on, not in, on. That's of the heart. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be, present tense, saved. Romans 10, 9 to 10, you confess the belief of your heart. You're saved. John three sixteen. believe on, on, on the Son of God. You're saved. Um, we see all throughout the scriptures, uh, when it talks about salvation, it's talked by grace, by faith, by belief, 
alone. This is not of ourselves. The moment I bring myself into it and I presume and assume that I have enough power to strip the eternal power of God off of me, uh, I've made myself a God. I'm a God. Because I can save and unsave myself at will. Uh, no, I'm sorry, you're not that powerful. It's all of Christ alone. He did all the work, all the atonement, everything. It is finished. That's kind of what that means. And he does everything, and he stands before you, and he offers it the, free, the gift of God, which is eternal life. Jesus Christ our Lord, the gift of God. He holds it. It's a gift. Do you earn your gift? Is it a reward for something you've done? What's a gift? It's like a birthday gift. A gift. He holds it out. It's free. Unmerited. Grace. Gracious gift. A gracious gift. He holds it out and says, do you want it? Do you want it? Take it. Here, this is what it's all about. He, he, he enlightens you, tells you what it's all about. Do you want it? Take it. And so, you take it. Do you, can, can you lose the gift? Can the person come back along and say, no, you don't deserve it, and take the gift back? Uh, there are no takebacks with God. He doesn't take back gifts. He gives it to you. It's yours forever. You now own it. It's yours. Well, I can throw the gift away. Does it cause the gift to cease to exist? Does that cause the gift to cease to exist? No. The, it's still there. It's still yours. You may have lost faith, but you don't lose salvation. There's a big difference. A universe difference between... Losing salvation and losing faith. You can lose salvation, but you can lose faith. You can get depressed and angry and stressed and anxious and fearful and worrying and fretting. And you can lose trust. You can lose faith. That's not losing salvation. That's, that's a whole different thing. Because you're in a bad mood or something bad happened or whatever is going on. You're struggling in temptation or whatever or else. You messed up. You didn't lose salvation. You may have lost trust. You may be in a, a deep, heavy state. That's that's your believing trust. That's different. You could become a spoiled, rotten brat of God for a while and, and, and be messing with things you ought not, but that's where the Spirit of God will correct you and discipline you. Whom the Lord loves, He chastises. He doesn't disown. He chastises. He doesn't disown. Salvation cannot be lost or taken away or recanted because it's by grace through faith are you saved that not of yourselves not of yourselves this is the beauty of the lord jesus christ that he holds us despite ourselves jesus says i will never leave you i will never leave you and forsake you, even though we might for a while we can get all upset and disappointed and stressed out and fretting and fearful and heavy and all of that. And we may get all upset and say, you know what, I'm done. And we go and stomp our feet and go and storm away our little temper tantrum. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't leave us. I will never leave you, even though we might. I will never let you go, even though we might. He doesn't. We could be over the cliff edge and we say, you know what, it's no point and drop our hands and let go. He's still holding on. He's not letting go, even though we might. The beauty of our Lord is that he knows our weaknesses. He knows what's going on. He knows our struggles. And that he says, I will not allow thee to be tempted above that which you're able, but I'll make a way of escape. He holds us. He convicts us. He instructs us. He, he fills us with his spirit, seals us with his spirit. He'll teach us. He'll teach us how to pray. He'll teach us what to say. He'll cause you to be in remembrance of everything right he has told us. The beauty of the spirit of God is you cannot drive him away. You're not that powerful. You can't drive away, strip yourself of the Spirit of God Almighty. Your stupidity, my stupidity, our weaknesses are not stronger than the hand of God. You can't wring yourself clean of the blood of Christ to get rid of the blood of Christ. You cannot strip out the Spirit of God. You cannot undo the redemption work of Jesus Christ. You can't rip the, the Lamb's book of life out of His hand and rip your own name out. You can't be dumb enough to cease to be a child of God. You can be pretty dumb, but you can't be so dumb, so powerful, powerfully dumb, that you can cease to be a child of God. 
Salvation is assured. The hypocritical, pharisaical, legalistic, works-based salvationists want to take the power of Christ away from Christ and put it in their own hands that I earn to gain, I maintain to keep, I self-atone. Salvation's in my hands, even though Scripture says it's not. There's a big difference between the book of life and the Lamb's book of life. As I said earlier, there's the book of life, as the Bible talks about in Revelation, and this is those that are born of flesh, born of water, as Jesus says in John chapter 3. You're born, is your name's in the in the book of life, Then, the, but you must be born of spirit. You're born again. There's the segment, the Lamb's book of life. The Revelation actually talks about two books. There's two. You can be struck out of the book of life, like Ananias and Sapphira, and you can lose your life, but you can't lose your spiritual life. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. Those in the church of Corinth, messing around in fornication and, and immorality, and Paul says you separate yourselves from them. It says they'll be delivered unto the, unto the devil for the destruction of the flesh, but their spirit will still be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. They, they, their, their names are written in the Lamb's book of life, but they may be destroyed by the devil. They'll, they'll be struck out of the book of life. There's a big difference. A big difference between the two. Salvation cannot be lost, cannot be taken away, cannot be recanted. Anyone telling you it can is wrong. They are then implying, they are then implying that in some way, shape, or form, your salvation is dependent upon you. And that's wrong. That contradicts Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Titus 3, 5, and Galatians 2, 16, and all the rest of Scripture. It contradicts everything. It, it causes grace to cease to be grace. The moment I have a hand in my salvation, grace ceases to be grace. It's either by grace... Or it's not. And if salvation is not by grace, then take your Bible and throw it in the garbage. Because the Bible flat out says it's by grace through faith. It's by Christ alone, by grace alone, by faith alone, by belief alone, not of works, not of righteous works, not by works of the law, not of ourselves in any way, shape, or form. Christ wants nothing but your believing faith. Believe only. Thy faith hath saved thee. Not of works. Salvation cannot be lost, cannot be taken away, cannot be recanted. Anyone saying that, saying that it can is wrong. So there you go. Now, again, if you have any questions on this, let me know. I also, you'll notice on in my account, I just put up a title card of the most recent video I did over on my YouTube channel, Christian Coffee Time. There's a link in my bio that take you to uh, uh, my website, which has links to all my other platforms. Click on the YouTube, it'll take you there. Check out my recent video on uh, our study on the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, uh, the Everlasting Grace. Everlasting Grace. Watch that video. I go into great detail on that. Now, by showing an, an example in Luke chapter 8 of eternal security and of the, the everlasting grace of Christ. Please make sure you check that out. The... Um, what is imputation of Christ's righteousness? Because we have no goodness of our own, no righteousness of our own, no ability of our own. There's nothing of us that we could possibly bring before God that, that could merit anything of God. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. All have fallen away, all have become corrupt. There's not, uh, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So we have nothing. So we have no power in ourselves to raise ourselves to everlasting life. He speaks into us life and he creates a living soul. He brings us to, to salvation. He saves us. He redeems us. This is Ephesians 1, 7 as well by the grace of Christ. So the righteousness of Christ is imputed, given. Righteousness is given so that when the Father looks upon you, he sees nothing of you, but rather he sees the work of his Son. He sees the work of Jesus Christ. He sees the imputation of the atonement of Christ upon you. He sees that you have been bought for, made new, changed, saved, redeemed, not by your righteousness, but by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's what that means. It's the work of Jesus Christ is given to you. He's paid for you, atoned for you, redeemed you, changed you, saved you, despite yourself. Not by anything of you, but all of him. That's what that means. Um, now, again, the, the, the thing about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit of God is massively misunderstood because most people think uh, think of the Catholic sense of this, of just cursing or saying something bad about the Spirit of God. That's really bad. 
you don't do that. But as we see in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 12, if I can find it here, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus accursed. If you have the Spirit of God, you won't be able to blaspheme the Lord. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. You can't pronounce Jesus Christ as Lord, God, your Savior, unless you have the Spirit of God. Now what does that go to mean? Well, if you are born again saved, you won't be able to blaspheme the Spirit of God. You won't be able to blaspheme Christ. You won't want to. So it comes down to not just the very act of doing it, but why would you want to do it in the first place? What is causing you to do that in the first place? Why, why would you want to curse the Spirit of God? That shows a hardened heart of unbelief. The hardened heart state, the sin until death. What's the sin until death? Rejection, refusal, uh, ignorance of the Lord, of this conviction of his salvation, of his work. It refusing, rejecting the Lord unto death. But the sin until death, they will never receive forgiveness. But all sins shall be forgiven, all blasphemies wherewith ever they shall blaspheme shall be forgiven them, except those who blaspheme the Holy Spirit of God. What does the Spirit of God do? Convicts you, draws you, enlightens you, shows you, that shows you that you need to be saved. You reject that. You reject that until death. So the rejection of the work of the Spirit of God until death, and you'll never receive forgiveness, is the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost that the, that the Word of God talks about. So in this works-based salvation they're saying that you could lose your salvation have salvation taken away or that you could recant it is heresy that denies it's rejecting rebelling and denying salvation by grace as the word of god is talking about it's then imparting a form of you earn your salvation you maintain to keep that's a false gospel it's a false gospel now God's hand is open to us, but can can you slap away the hand of God by a hardened heart of unbelief? Yeah. But those that are saved won't be doing that. As, as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, those who have the Spirit of God will not curse Christ, will not hate Christ. You will not be able to speak evil of Christ. Those that are saved, well, those that are unsaved have not the Spirit of God, and they can harden their hearts and, and reject the Lord. So you see, there's a big difference here. Massive difference. So I have a lot more, a lot more on this. I have a bunch of videos over on my YouTube channel. I go in depth on a number of the different aspects of eternal security. Once saved, always saves. I don't have time here to go over everything. So I would like to invite you to over to the Christian Coffee Time YouTube channel. My link is in my bio now to my website. And, uh, and from my website, you can click on the YouTube link. It'll take you over there. Check the playlist. The playlist. Uh, once saved, always saved on the Christian Coffee Time YouTube channel. I got a whole bunch of videos in there and some videos from other people as well uh, joining in as well, proving once saved, always saved according to the Word of God. And that salvation is not by works, not by righteous works, not by works of the law or any other thing. It's by grace alone. So please make sure... Uh, you check that out. If you need help finding our YouTube channel, just private message me. I'll send you the, a direct link and I uh, can help you out there. So with that, I'm going to wrap that up there. So God bless you folks. God bless all those who love our Lord God, Jesus Christ. God bless all those who love his holy word. Hope to see you again, folks. And as always, if I don't see you again, I'll see you in the sky. God bless.